in the Minneapolis suite, uh, running about uh, one and uh, three quarters to two cents higher over the Minneapolis suite. As we speak with Scott Geekus, he's with Walsh Trading. Scott, what's the volume been like here today? Because we're, you know, Monday is really, quote unquote, the end of the month. We're getting very close to that. So uh, what about position squaring? What's the volume been like? Yeah, the volume right now is pretty pretty light across the board, futures as well as the option contracts. So everybody's just pretty much waiting to get those stocks report on Monday, see how those are going to come out. That's going to dictate which way the markets are really going to move for the end of the month. So what about weather and harvest progress? Um, at, at some point, does that come back or we just trade technicals after this report is out? Well, yeah, the weather is definitely going to be a factor moving forward for the next few weeks or so. Uh, not really too big of a concern about the early frost that has been reported earlier. So that's really taken off the table. So now we have to worry about the rain coming in, whether or not we can get that harvest through uh, through the, the harvest uh, mm -hmm. cycle. So we have to wait and see how that's going to come out with the rain coming in for the next few days. You know, parts of the Midwest are getting hit hard. Other parts, it's dwindling off. So we have to really see how that weather pattern is really going to affect the harvest. You make a good point. I was just having a conversation with our meteorologist, Tim Ross, about all of that. He said that the frost threat is still off of the table, clear up through Thursday. Yeah, the daytime highs are going to only get into the 60s. But he says uh, a real hard frost uh, still likes it. Could, could be uh, back quite a ways so far. So what have you been hearing about South America weather when it comes to soybeans? You know, because they were getting off to a rough start trying to get those soybeans planted because it was so dry. What's the trade talking about when it comes to that? Right. So they had issues with the dry weather. Now, with a little bit of precipitation coming into play in the next few days, that is expected to increase a little bit. But we're going to have to wait and see whether or not the rain actually shows up or not. I mean, it's just pretty much, you know, like the headlines. You never know what's going to come out. We never know if the weather is going to stick or if it's going to move and pass or not. So we're just waiting to see. OK. Uh, what about uh, then the, these uh, this demand side? trade talking a lot about trying to get this demand up and running here once we once we get further down the road now that we've got a trade deal with Japan right the Japan trade war talks is a definitely support of a price but with China continuing to increase their imports from Argentina as well as Brazil we they continue to buy US beans for now and they're rumored to continue to buy US pork whether or not those numbers actually come true, we have yet to wait and see if those numbers are going to hold. But with the demand side, if China continues to buy from South America, that's going to hurt U.S. demand a little bit. So all right. we have to wait and see. Sounds good. Well, we'll talk about the hogs and the cattle, and all of that's coming up next. We'll do that with Scott here in just a moment. Stay with us here on the Market Day Report. Scott Geekus, Walsh Trading, still here with us at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago there at the CME Group. All right, now let's shift gears over here to the livestock. Boy, we've really, uh, really caught a little bit of a bid over here on this cattle market. Things to be, seems to be firming up a little bit. You think we've got enough momentum now to swing us up through this next level of uh, resistance? Uh, well, it's really going to depend on the cash cattle trade. So if we get a bump up in price, there's no doubt that I think we're going to have some continuation, some follow through to the upside. You know, the cattle market in particular has been really resilient with that consumer confidence number being a little bit weaker. So typically that's what they focus on with the economic numbers versus the cattle prices. A weaker economics brings cattle prices down. But in this particular case, it hasn't. So that's definitely a support of that's something that we're looking for. If we see a little bit of bump up in the cash cattle trade, we expect a little follow through to the upside. You know, to your point last night, I uh, went to the local steakhouse and if it's any indication of the consumer and their demand for beef, there was a lot of people there last night having steaks. And so uh, that, that demand, at least domestically, seems to remain pretty strong. Uh, we have heard some indications that maybe this time around we'll have a little bit higher cash. But we're seeing this wholesale product market back off, continue to back off since it spiked right after the Tyson fire. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the biggest thing. So we've always been, after the fire happened, everyone was worried about the backup. But the slaughter rate is continuing to hold steady. I mean, it's off slightly, but not enough to be concerned about. So that's definitely supportive as well. So you have a bullish fundamentals moving forward with the cash cat or with the cattle trade. So we have to wait and see if those fundamentals are going to hold true. All right. What do you think of the hogs? The hog is a completely different market. So 
with the hog market being a little bit lower today, it's very surprising seeing that we have that trade deal with, with Japan and we're removing the tariffs for Japan. So we have to wait and see if they're going to continue to buy U.S. pork at a much higher level than what it has been in the past. But with the African swine fever continuing to spread, you know, the biggest thing that we're looking at as especially as far as traders, traders, you look for confirmation. So the demand in China is definitely there. It's above normal. That is confirmed mm -hmm. by China releasing the state reserves. Yep. So the demand's definitely there. We just have to wait for the export numbers to come through. All right, Scott, thank you very much. Let's look at the live cattle market.